All right, today I'm going to be going through a carburetor on a 1999 Kawasaki 300 Prairie. And the 300 Prairie two-wheel drive and four-wheel drives are gonna have the same carburetors. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a video, a separate video on the Kawasaki Prairie 400 carburetor. And I'm gonna show you some differences between the two. So I'm just gonna go through now and I'm gonna show you what to clean, what to rebuild, what a lot of times will come with a rebuild kit, just what different parts of this carburetor are. Obviously have this carburetor already off the four-wheeler and I've done a separate video on how to remove this carburetor from the four-wheeler. We have our cables already off here. We've got our choke cable that runs in here along with our plunger here. We've got our fuel line that comes in here, a vent line up here, and those are already off. We do have our uh, idle adjust screw right here, our knob. That's gonna go directly underneath the four-wheeler. You're gonna be able to adjust that idle from sitting on the four-wheeler just by reaching your hand underneath of there, and there'll be a position or a, a mount for this knob here. Turn it clockwise, gonna turn that idle up. Counterclockwise, gonna turn it down. What that's doing uh, is opening this butterfly here, allowing more air to flow through your carburetor and pulling more fuel up from your bottom bowl area. I would suggest making your, completely warming up your four-wheeler before adjusting your idle and just do small increments at, this, at a time so that uh, your idle isn't way out of whack when you go and ride your four-wheeler. What you're doing there when adjusting your idle, your butterfly is actually opening up and it's like, it's the same thing. I'm gonna pull this cover off here where your throttle cable was. It's the same thing as giving it throttle, um, but obviously you're not having to hold your th thumb throttle lever uh, to idle it up a little bit. So adjusting your idle, it's gonna push, this screw right here is gonna actually push up on your butterfly here and it's gonna allow more air to flow through. Your throttle cable is gonna run down through here. You give it you give it some throttle there, it's gonna open this butterfly. So same concept there. This is just gonna be small increments when you go to adjust your idle. When you go to clean your carburetor, you wanna make sure that uh, your area around your, your outlet here and your inlet here is completely clean. You wanna make sure that dirt and debris doesn't fall down inside your motor. You also wanna make sure that there isn't unnecessary dirt that's gonna fall into your carburetor here and potentially cause issues uh, when you clean your carburetor. So I'm going to uh, pull this bowl off here. There's four Phillips screws around the outside and these are a little bit of a challenge to pull off sometimes if they were over tightened originally. You wanna make sure you have a good screwdriver to pull these off. Uh, if you can't get a screwdriver, uh, get them loosened with a screwdriver. I suggest maybe a small pair of vice grips. Just be really careful you don't damage your bottom bowl here or break your post off or break your screw off there. This is an aluminum carburetor and uh, you can't really replace a lot of these body parts on this carburetor, uh, just, just the internals. So if you do break a tab off, there'll be no replacing it. It'll just be buying a new carburetor. Those four Phillips screws are off. You've got your heater wire that's here. You've got a sensor that sits here and there's a mount that kind of holds that heater into place there uh, right here. So sometimes that can kind of hold us up when we go to remove this bottom bowl. Just be really careful you don't, you don't push this bottom bowl around here around very much. Uh, because uh, underneath of it is you're going to be your float. It's a plastic float and it can get, can get damaged uh, by this overflow post here if you're moving this uh, float or if you're moving this bowl around a whole lot to try to try to work that sensor off uh, from that clamp. So your overflow tube is here, like I said, when your four wheeler is bouncing around on the trailer or if, you're, if the four wheelers sit in the shop and you see fuel underneath of it, what's happening is your, bot, your bowl here is filling up with fuel. It's gonna dump out your overflow tube here. It's gonna come out this bottom nipple here. So if you've got fuel that's just constantly sitting underneath your four wheeler, you may wanna check your needle and seat and I'll show you that here in a little bit, but that's gonna be right here. Um, the other thing you might wanna check, make sure that your drain screw is tight also want to make sure that your O-ring around here is good. You can see that somebody put some liquid gasket sealer on this O-ring here. That's fine if you want to do that. Just be really careful that you don't get any of that sealant down in your bowl area here. That's going to plug up jets. So 
when you go to drain your fuel, if you're gonna drain it for the, for the winter, if your four wheeler's sitting around, all you need to do is loosen this Allen screw a couple turns, fuel's gonna start dumping out there. You do wanna make sure that you've got a hose attached here so that fuel drains uh, underneath of your four wheeler as opposed to directly onto your motor there. It's gonna cause some discoloration. You can pull and remove and replace this clamp if you want here. It's just a Phillips screw there. Really no reason to do that. These are hard to bend and break and a lot of times you don't have to replace this part here. But uh, like I said, this is gonna be your heater here and this just pulls out and that's what your heater looks like there. Obviously not gonna get uh, extremely hot. It's just used to help start that four wheeler when it's cold out. You've got a, your sensor here that you can remove with a 10 millimeter uh, wrench there. So to remove your, uh, your pin here to pull your float off, take a pick and push this through. One thing you wanna keep in mind, and on this one you're gonna see it a little bit, this pin here has got some room to move around and that's not good. You wanna make sure that that pin is tight in there. You wanna make sure that it, it uh, isn't going to move around like this or you're gonna constantly be having fuel leaking from your carburetor. So we need to replace this carburetor because these posts um, are not replaceable and this pin can move around way too much. So we'll take and push this out and we can pull our float off now. Underneath of there is your needle and then underneath of your needle where your needle sits is down in your seat area there. And you wanna inspect this needle here, make sure that this rubber here isn't grooved, make sure that that rubber tip is still on there. That's gonna what's, that's, going to be what seals that fuel uh, from dumping in to your carburetor. So you've got your fuel coming in here. It's going to run down this line here. It's going to run through this area here, and this needle is going to shut it off if there's enough fuel in there. If that float is, t is um, closing that needle, that fuel should shut off. This needle can go on either direction. There's a wire clip there that holds it, that holds that needle into place. You can adjust this uh, float here, and there's a metal tab here. You can just bend, uh, and I wouldn't suggest bending it a whole lot at a time, but if you need to adjust that, that is possible. You can uh, check those specs in a manual. Setting that aside there, we've got our main jet here, we've got our secondary main jet here, and we've got our pilot jet here. You wanna make sure you use a good screwdriver to remove these. If you use too small of a screwdriver and you twist it in here, what's gonna happen is you're going to damage this jet here. It's gonna restrict uh, fuel flowing through there. So I like to use a good size screwdriver to loosen these up. Go ahead and loosen them up just like that. Take and you can then pull these out. Between the two, these are gonna look identical. Your main jet here, your secondary main jet here are gonna look identical, except your main jet's gonna have a, a much larger port running through that jet. So if you get those confused, um, you can just look through them. One of them is gonna be substantially larger than the other one on the inside. Larger one's gonna be your main jet here, sits on your main jet holder, this brass post here. So also you can read on the side there they are different sizes. You can um, you can get different sizes of these if you need to for performance parts on the four wheeler. If you're riding in different altitudes, you can uh, replace these jets here so that uh, your four wheeler is going to run like it should. Make sure you're getting enough fuel when you need the fuel. Your pilot jet's a little more tricky. It sits clear down in this area here. Take a flat screwdriver again. Make sure it's the right size intake and make sure you find the actual groove in there for your screwdriver and then you can loosen that up turn it about 10 turns and you should be able to dump that pilot screw out also want to make sure that you can see through it there's little ports here you want to make sure that those are cleaned out and uh, make sure that fuel can flow through there easily your pilot jet is going to be used when you're starting your four-wheeler. So if you have a four-wheeler that's not starting, more than likely you've got pilot jet issues. That or you've got plunger issues here. But nine times out of 10, when a carburetor comes into the shop that won't start, won't sit there and idle, it's because of this pilot jet here. So they'll start up with a carbon choke cleaner because at that point they're using, um, they're using the main jets because you're, a lot of times you're giving it uh, 
giving it some throttle that's going to allow fuel to come up through these these main jets here and you're going to allow your four-wheeler to start like that but it's not going to sit there and idle if this pilot jet is gummed up keeping all those components off i'm going to take and i'm going to pull this top cap off here there's four phillips screws again may need to use vice grips if you do use vice grips to pull these off i suggest replacing those screws they are cheap and most dealerships are going to have screws like this because fairly common problem if you're cleaning your carburetor by yourself um, not taking it to a shop a lot of times uh, one of those phillips screws gets damaged so pretty common go ahead and remove these i like to keep my hand on top here because there is a spring that sits down underneath of this cap we can take and pull that cap off of there and then you see that spring there we've got our keeper that's going to sit and it's actually a lot of times we'll get stuck onto this spring there which is okay we can leave that on there that's what holds our needle into place there's our cap there our spring's going to sit in that that groove there We'll set that aside. Take our finger, you can push this uh, slide up and the needle will come with it. You wanna make sure that this diaphragm isn't catching in this groove here. Uh, if you're pushing it up, a lot of times you'll rip this diaphragm and these diaphragms are pretty expensive. So pull that up, inspect this diaphragm, make sure there's no rips or tears in it. This needle is not uh, adjustable. It is replaceable though. So you've got different sizes there. You've got a size that's gonna be engraved on your needle here make sure you check that make sure that that is the right size uh, that you need for uh, your altitude and riding conditions and there's nothing else underneath of this a lot of times uh, different carburetors will have um, washers underneath here this one does not it's just simply this needle here that slides down into the center there make sure that these aren't grooved make sure there's no uh, dirt or debris that's gonna that's in this area here your choke you can see there, you might be able to see there, runs down this port here. So when you have your choke plunger in there, it's going to open and shut. You're gonna be able to see that running through that area there. You can be able to see it also from the top here. Um, that's a larger port that you can see down through. This is a vent line here. Also works with your diaphragm. I believe if I'm not mistaken, this is hooked up to your air box. Um, I can look that up to double check that for you. Um, but you want to make sure that this port is cleaned out as well. You can take carbon choke cleaner and spray everything off at this point. We don't have any rubber O-rings that need to be um, taken off right now. So you can take and spray through here with carbon choke cleaner. Make sure ports like this and this are good. Make sure ports like this are good. And down in here, just want to make sure that everything is completely cleaned out. Going back together then, take our needle. Drop it down the center of this slide there. I like to take and push our, my diaphragm down like this here. And then I will take it and find which direction it needs to go uh, through here. And I've got my finger right here because it's going to hold that needle in place there. Once I get that needle, that's going to sit right down into that uh, area there. If it doesn't, if, if you've got it twisted just like this, it's going to push that needle up. So by having my finger in here, that's going to hold it into place. What that's doing there is that needle is allowing that fuel to come up through um, your main jet there and come up into your carburetor and then essentially go down into your motor there. So that is why we will replace a main jet if we're adding performance parts to the four-wheeler because we're going to need more fuel flowing from our bottom bowl area up through our carburetor and in, into our motor. If we're riding in different altitudes, those jets will need uh, replaced because you may not need as much fuel. And when you're giving it fuel, so say you're giving it fuel, you've got air flowing through here. This is going to come up. Your needle is going to come up, allow more fuel to flow up through here. If we've got a smaller jet on here, it's going to restrict fuel and um, going to run. Your four wheeler is going to run like it should. So make sure that you check your specs to see what uh, altitude those jets are supposed to be, um, what size of jets you need for the altitude that you're riding in. Then going back together there, if you've got carbon choke cleaner on your diaphragm here, a lot of times what I'll do is set this 
out in the sun. Make sure you dry this off really good and that'll shrink down back down to the size that you'll want it to be. You wanna make sure that it sits in that groove. If it doesn't sit in that groove, it's not gonna seal, it's not gonna work properly. You're gonna have a four that doesn't run very good. So just make sure it sits down in there. Grab then our plastic clip, make sure that that's there and our spring, set that down. Make sure that that seats properly. Take our top cap there. Still have my finger underneath of our slide so that our diaphragm does not uh, come out of place there. Make sure that our spring goes down like it should into that correct location there. Take and put our cap on. We're gonna use the smaller screws and, and I'm gonna keep my finger on top there until we get all th at least three of these screws in place here and tighten down. That way our diaphragm doesn't fall out of its groove. All right, we've got all four screws tightened up there. I'm gonna flip this upside down here. I'm gonna find our main jet. So just looking through them, I can tell the obvious difference between them. Our main jet holder here can be pulled out. That's an eight millimeter wrench that'll pull that out. And you can see there that you've got holes in here that you wanna make sure are cleaned out, make sure that that is completely cleaned out. You can see there your needle running through there. So it almost runs up into your actual um, main jet there. So just make sure that that port is cleaned out really well. Take our eight, eight millimeter wrench then, snug that up. Double check that we've got the right main jet. Put that on. Our secondary main is going to sit uh, right beside it there. And your secondary main, a lot of times what they say is your idle jet will run from um, zero throttle to quarter, quarter throttle. Your main jet will run from... Um, quarter throttle to three quarter throttle and then your secondary main will run uh, for the top quarter throttle and at that point your main jet and your secondary main are wide open so take and snug those up again making sure you're using the right screwdriver there so you don't damage the top of those jets and then your pilot jet just make sure that that area is really good and clean as um if you've got fuel that's going to be sitting in there for any amount of time at all, that could potentially gum up those jets. Take our needle then, slide it on that metal tab there. Again, it doesn't matter which, which angle you put that on. Slide that down, push our pin through there. Again, if it's, if it's um, a little snug, that's okay. You want to make sure that you don't put too much pressure on there and break off these posts. Those can be damaged very, very easily. Take our sensor there, push that in. Another thing I wanna show you here quick is our air fuel screw, which is here. To adjust this, you wanna count how many turns it is out. So if we're gonna take and clean it, we wanna first take and, and run that screw in so that it's completely seated. So half turn, one full, one and a half, two. So it's typically, it's about two turns in, which is pretty standard. Now you can take and remove that. You can clean it out then. All right, we'll take and remove that then. There's a couple pieces that may come out with it, so just pay really close attention to that. What came out here was just our, our air fuel screw and our spring. And then down in there, there's a lot of times gonna be an O-ring and a washer. A, what you're gonna have is uh, this screw here, then you're going to have a spring, then you're going to have a washer, then you're going to have an O-ring. Going back together then, you're going to have an O-ring first, then you're going to have a washer, then you're going to have a spring, then you're going to have your screw. You want to make sure that all those are seated properly, going back together. I'm not going to remove our O-ring or our washer because there's too good of a chance going back together on a used carburetor that you could damage that O-ring. Very, very small O-ring and hard to get seated properly if they're used because a lot of times they're dried out a little bit. Take and run that screw completely in, then we'll back it out. Half turn, one and a half, two. Then putting our bottom bowl on here, make sure everything's secured up top. Just be really careful that, uh, again, that this post doesn't damage your float. Take and set that on there. Make sure that that O-ring is good on the bottom of that bowl there. They can slide that down into place. And there are grooves on this bottom bowl here so that those will seat 
so it'll seat properly. And then you've got four screws that are gonna be the same size that we'll put on the bottom bowl here. Snug these up. All right, once we get all four of those screws tightened up, then uh, this carburetor is ready to go back onto the four-wheeler. I'm gonna leave our throttle housing cover off here, our throttle cable housing, um, because we're going to, when we put this back on the four-wheeler, we're just gonna have to pull that cover right back on. So um, I'm just gonna leave it off. Our cable's gonna slide in here. There's gonna be a lock nut up top here, and it's gonna fall into that groove there. Take, and you can, when I, when I put that cable on there, I actually take and push that butterfly up like that. That way there's some slack in that cable, and then you can slide it on and off in that groove there. So that is the carb clean on a 1999 Kawasaki Prairie 300. I've done several other videos on this machine, so make sure you check out those on my channel. If you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.